So you're probably familiar with a single sinusoid being a way to, to be considered a signal. But signals can often have many, many different properties. But it turns out that signals can often be represented as a sum of sinusoids, which will be a whole set of different frequencies with amplitude and phases to them. And you know, they may or you know that they may have a whole range of things. Now this turns out to be fairly, fairly good because you know if you had things with multiple sinusoids at the same frequency, that really becomes a single sinusoid. So that's not a problem you're going to typically worry about. But here it becomes an interesting question. If I have a, a signal that is periodic, so therefore it means that I have a fundamental frequency. And that fundamental frequency has a particular period, which will be t0. Okay, so they're just the inverse of each other. Then an interesting thing happens. Then it, then it turns out that I can talk about having a sum of sinusoids for that signal that are all integer multiples of this fundamental frequency. And that turns out to be really, really valuable. So all of these um, all of these frequencies now are integer multiples of the original F0. And I can start talking about how that would approach. Now the phase could be any value, the amplitudes could be any value. And this allows me to have all sorts of different ways of approaching these kinds of signals. I have some coefficient, I could have a half in front, I could talk about a whole range of different kinds of numbers there. All right, so, very interesting. By the way, this is very interesting, the fact that I, if I get something periodic in sort of time, it gives me something that gives me sort of discrete, almost say samples of frequencies in, in a frequency space. And that's kind of interesting to think about because that there's a reciproc reciprocal sense between time and frequency. What's interesting here further is that you know, now you can start talking about, well, okay, how would I solve this? And, and this is also a case of expanding around any sort of orthogonal basis. Um, and a whole set of sine, cosines or sinusoid or sine waves or any sort of structures tend to be of different of integer frequencies or orthogonal to each other. This means that if I take the sort of the integral over a full period, the only things that show up are, you know, basically the cross products are all zero. The only thing that show up are the same the same values. So this is really quite quite cool. And further, we'll often sort of expand this um, sort of cosine kind of thing in a more canonical form here in a complex exponential. This allows us to generalize things as where I can look at the different coefficients all the way through. And so this turns out to be very, very valuable. Um, because now I could say, imagine representing this as an infinite series of coefficients, but now it's an integer number of coefficients all the way through the structure. Notice also I have positive and negative frequencies as a result, right? Because remember that sine and cosine was a plus, was plus one phase, one sort of argument plus the negative of the argument. So one way to talk about this is having positive and negative frequencies, which might sound like a little bit strange, but it's a very useful, useful construct and something we're going to see used a lot um, in so many different, different places and applications. So this formulation is called a Fourier series. It is a series of sinusoids and a way to think about how we generalize this, this property. Now, what's interesting is there's some intriguing operations on, on this and it's worth noting these operations because these will show up in multiple different ways going forward. One of which is if I have a signal and it gets delayed, I can sort of take the core definition and then just insert it. And what I notice is that I get this e to something related to this set of frequencies. Or maybe I might just notice that it's an exponential e to the j 2 pi f times that delay. Seems to be a j missing there, but otherwise we get it. And this is very valuable, and you'll see this used in other places as well. What we also see is that if I take the derivative or I take the integral, I will also get these sort of very interesting things where I get a sum of something at just 2 pi f or 1 over 2 pi f um, or 1 over what we'll often call omega, which is equal to the 2 pi f term.
very, very useful. Now there's also a J in front of it, um, and that will be very important as you look at, at, at this map. But it's interesting because it also foreshadows other things that one might be starting to find interesting with some of, some of these approaches. But this sort of definition for a Fourier, Fourier series gives you a tremendous amount of power and flexibility, um, both in terms of looking at things in sort of sinusoids, but if you haven't thought about you know, how you might expand things on an orthogonal basis, this is a very powerful technique used in a lot of different places.